the hit stick right there. A reminder that you can get get involved in the conversation and s send us any questions or comments about the game by tweeting me at John Seitzman, or I'm sure you can also tweet NS Curl, or even f send me a message on any other social media platform that that you can find me on. Send us your questions, comments about the game, where you're tuning in from. We'd love to hear from you as we are down to the, the nitty-gritty of the Nova Scotia curling playoff picture. At the end of the Scotty's Tournament of Hearts, it, it is quite an opportunity for the winner of this event as they'll get to compete in front of a Nova Scotian crowd for the first time since 1992 as the event will be at Center 200 starting February 16th. And we'll look forward to seeing that event, Jennifer Jones currently le leading in a strong field of what will be a great show put on on the island as we see hit there, sticks right there. Second stone here from Mary Sue Radford. Reminder, uh, for anyone who may be just tuning in for the first time or maybe a little bit unfamiliar, we'll just give you a reminder of the rules here at the Scotty's Tournament of Hearts. We do play 10 ends of play, 38 minutes of thinking time. And if we are tied at the completion of that 10 ends of play, we would go to extra time to decide the winner. And also a reminder that we do play the five rock rule f for the free guard zone. Which is something that teams are still kind of getting used to. But we haven't seen as many times as we you would have thought w where it has come into play. As we see hit rolls over t to the side of the 12. As mentioned here, the Skip Colleen Jones, former multi-time Scotty's national champion, settles into the hack for her first of two. She does throw the third stones for her rink. Radford working on it here, trying to hold the line. We'll get the hit, roll, rolls out the back, clean house, facing Kelly Bachman. Bachman, the long time skip in her own right, who had Kristen McDermott as her third Took a bit of time off a few years ago and came back to, to the game pl playing vice for Kristen and this team has gelled really well having made last year's final. We did have that final for you last year as it was a Marianne Arsenault victory 8-5 to five over Kristen McDermott so she's looking to keep her hopes alive and stay on the road to center 200. Second stone here from Jones as the blue of McDermott is behind the tee line. Looks like they decided to play a little bit more aggressive, go for the freeze. Coulter and Radford working on it. Trying to come right down. We'll get to the lid. Taps the blue of Team McDermott back. So sitting one is 
Colleen Jones opportunity to play out of force and really put the pressure on in this matchup. Four stones coming here as the skip, Kristen McDermott settles into the hack. Lots of Team McDermott fans in the crowd, both from their home cl club over in Halifax and also for us. some of them a bunch from the Dartmouth Curling Club. This team having a, a history in the past of having played out at this Dartmouth Curling Club. Sweepers work on this one, trying to get it down right right to the face will not. Shot still remains Colleen Jones. And reminder that if you are in the area and want to come down and watch some exciting curling action, we have action here at the Dartmouth Curling Club taking place throughout the weekend leading to the championship finals tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. Lots of seats around the club to watch some great curling action as we now see the four stone thrower for team Colleen Jones, Kim Kelly the long time third for Jones, having won many national titles, world titles together. Bradford working on this one here. Coulter joins her. Curls just over, will get it pass and will sit for two. Good result for Kelly. I will mention there, if you do want to come on down, it is only $5 a draw. Games at 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. this e today, and the Scotty's final at 9 a.m. tomorrow, and the Deloitte Tankard final at 2. But if you can't join us, we're more than happy to be br bringing this live to you courtesy of our friends at 360 Live. Final stone here for McDermott without the last rock playing the blue stones. Looking to freeze on down to the stone at the forefoot. Waiting for it to go. A little bit wide so big opportunity here for Kim Kelly and, and Team Jones to open up this matchup with a big multiple point end. You get at least a good chunk of the eight foot, you get yourself a count of three. As Kim heads on down the hack to make her final shot update of the game on she D our other feature game as it will be a blank end between Hilliard and Arsenal. Arsenal will retain the last rock in end number two playing the Yellowstones. Final stone with the last rock Kim Kelly. Good chunk of the f of full eight for a count of three. Sweepers working on this one, just trying to be absolutely sure. Jones joins her. Wait, Jones, will do so. 
will score a count of three to open up this tiebreaker matchup. McDermott will have the last rock in end number two as Jones will lead opening up with that three. So as we go through this matchup, we'll also give you a little bit of insight of what you can expect at center 200 in Sydney as we will have the winner advancing on. As we mentioned, one of the teams already prepared to be there will be Team Canada. Jennifer Jones, Caitlin Laws, Jocelyn Peterman, and Don McEwen curling out of the St. Vital in Winnipeg. One of the only records in Canadian women's his history that can come anywhere near the record of Colleen Jones is that of Jennifer Jones. The six-time world champion, correction, sorry, six-time Canadian champion, 16-time Grand Slam champion. And of course, who can forget that Olympic gold medal win in so Sochi, Russia in 2014. Sweeper's working on that one. Gets it just biting, it appears. But McDermott setting up the corner guard with this first stone from Barker. One of the events also taking place this weekend across Canada when it comes to the playdowns is out of New Brunswick as their women's teams and men's teams are facing off at Curl Moncton. Down the final three there as Sarah Millay will face Sylvie Robichaud, winner to face Andrea Crawford. Super's working on this one here from Rum Coulter trying to get get a buy will come up short, it appears. Will jam. Comes to rest as a bite or two. How you doing? Here's your ticket. You can have it. If you get a hundred of them, you get three sacks of boy. Well, I guess I could. As opposed to costing a lot of money. So McDermott not take any chances there with those two biters. Go, gonna call on Barker to go for the hit. Jones sweeping it there, trying to get it where it needs to be. Will come to rest. Appears to be just out of the house. On the second zones here, Mary Sue Radford looking for the hit. Kelly working on this one there. Will get the hit, rolls toward the lines coming off of the forefoot. Excited to be here with you, bring you all the action throughout the rest of this weekend, right down to the championship finals. Yeah. 
So hope you can stick with us and watch some exciting curling action as we determine our representatives for the Scotties and the Tim Hortons Briar. Super's working on this one here from, from Jones, starting to curl a lot. How far will it go? It will get contact, will roll out, it appears. Yes, it will. Just taking a, a look at that one on the side, it does look like it. There was a little bit of question, but to to me, there there was just enough to see there that the it is in. So Radford clearing up some stones up at the front, clears the guard out the other side. Second stone here from Carly Jones looking to put up the guard once again. Some of our viewers may be very familiar with Carly Jones having not only headed off recently to the Canadian Mixed Championship, but she also was, oh, for many events, some, one of our broadcast colleagues. Third stone's here, Colleen Jones. The skip throwing third stones. Gets the hit, rolls out the side, it appears. Relatively clean house facing Kelly Bachman. As mentioned, we will have the women's semifinal. The winners of these two games will face each other in that semifinal. The losers of this ga game, the road will be over. So Colleen Jones settles into the hack here, try, going to try to come around draw. Jones, one of the most top level skips that has ever played the game. Uh, having won six Scotty's Tournament of Hearts titles, including four of them in a row, which was unprecedented, and 138 wins at the national level as, as a skip. She's won this event a record, what I believe would be a record, 21 times. But looking to return to the Scotties for the first time since 2013. Bachman here looking for the hit. Sweeper is now on it. We'll get the hit. Rolls over behind the guard. Will sit. Second shot. Good result there from Bachman. Yeah. <laughs> 
And the thing to think there that is pretty cool with, with Colleen Jones that a lot of people do not realize there is that she's won... Not only, of course, we we know about her, her prestigious record in the Scotty's Tournament of Hearts, absolutely unprecedented, having won six Canadian titles and four in a row, but she's also had gold medals at the Canadian Seniors and the Canadian Mixed, so a triple threat in all the disciplines at the national level. Sweeper's working on, on this one here from Kelly. Jones joins in, tries to, to get as far as they can go. It looks like it's going to die down a little bit earlier than they had hoped. Opportunity for hit and roll by McDermott. So Kristen McDermott settles into the hack. The former provincial finalists. Great record on, on the World Curling Tours throughout the season with some big results. Sweepers right off on this one. Try Trying to wait for it to curl to get the roll over behind the guard. Looks like it's going to come to the nose. So, as mentioned there, Kristen McDermott having won a few big events throughout the season and also had some great results there at the Dave Jones Mayflower Cast spiel earlier in the year. One of the big ones in the area. Sweeper's working on this one there. Radford trying to get the stone of Her, her, uh, her th fourth stone thrower, Kim Kelly, to curl. So, so open hit for a deuce here to to op open the scoring for her, Kristen McDermott. And number two down by three. Sweepers on, working on this one there, Barker and Jones. Just to be sure, it looks like the brooms go up and it will be a count of two for Team Chris and McDermott to open up the scoring on their side of the board. It will be a 3-2 to two lead for Colleen Jones going into the third end of play, and Jones will have the last rock in that third end playing the Yellowstones. Update of the game over on She's D, our other feature game, as it will be an opening count of two for Tanya Hilliard. which is a big count for her as she competes in this game against the defending champions, Team Arsenal, looking to keep their hopes alive.
opening up this end there. Barker with her first, looking for the center guard. So Coulter here with her first. Looking to play to, to the side of the 12. And it's interesting to think there that, that this a little bit of an insane tiebreaker Saturday morning came from the results of a very nail-biter final draw. As coming into the final draw in the round robin, there was possibilities of up to six teams that could have been tied for a playoff position. Unfortunately for one of those teams that did need to win, Julie McAvoy eliminated with a loss to Teresa Breen. That would have put her in, into this tie break. And also there could have been even potential for, for Jill Brothers, who could have been in this tiebreaker, but ended up with a win over Mary McKett and Driscoll. Second stone here from Coulter. We see Kelly and Radford working on this one, trying to get to curl a little bit more. We have seen this she does start to come down a lot. So on the second stones here, Carly Jones looking to play down to shot stone, flop it over. We'll get to the other side. Sitting second shot, a little bit more of the four foot belonging to that stone belonging to team Colleen Jones. So guard removed there, so it opens up the path toward that stone of Team Jones. So Kristen jumping at the opportunity for Carly Jones to go for the hit. Sweepers working on this one. They will get get their roll over to the other so side of the ace. Sue Radford here. And 
And we definitely did have quite a, an even week for all eight of these teams. Many of these returning from the event last year here. So lots of great experience throughout the field. Third stones here, Kelly Bachman. Barker and Jones working on that one early, but waiting for it now. We'll come back to nose, so sitting one, two. We'll hope to throughout the, the weekend bring you some insights from hopefully some, some guests there alongside me for the action. As we see a stone here from Jones gets the hit, sticks right there. Lots of rocks in play in the other tiebreaker, so We'll try to keep you up to date of that that match as well. Big game between Tanya Hilliard, the former fourth stone thrower for Teresa Breen, facing off against Marianne Arsenault, the defending champion. The winners of these matches will face each other at 2 p.m. live in our feature game here on Sheet C and with a shot at the Scotties. Final against Jill Brothers on the line. So gets the hit, rolls over to the side, sits one, two. Leading to possibilities that we could see a, a force here in this third end of play. It would really play well into the game plan of Kristen McDermott looking to get a, a steal or at least force Colleen Jones to take a single point. So Jones... Gets the hit, sticks right there. And on the skip stones, it will be Kristen McDermott without the last rock, down by one. Coming in a hack there, Chris McDermott looking for the hit. Jones and Barker working on this one early. Trying to get a hit, Brums up, will stick right there. Counts one, two. the four stones still this time now from Kim Kelly looking for the takeout on the stone at the side eight foot We'll get the hit stick right there. And we want to send a little shout out out to 
Team Ethan Young and Team Callie Moore, our representatives, headed off to the Canada Winter Games as it is the pep rally day for Team Nova Scotia before the 300 plus athletes from all the different sports head off to Red Deer and we wish them the best of luck. Actually, it's interesting to think there that one of our players here on the ice, Colleen Jones, was a silver medalist in the Canada Winter Games, which was one of the first pieces of her illustrious resume in the sport. So who knows, maybe in a few years we will see Ethan Young and Callie Moore. We have seen junior teams qual qualify for this event in the past. Last year, it was Isabelle Ladusser from Lakeshore, who arguably may have stunned the the field by qualifying as what the as far as I can rem remember, the youngest team in the history of this event. Final stone here for Kim Kelly, looking for the hit to score her single. Sweeper's working on, on this one here, coming off center line. Really starting to go. Will sit right there for her single, so it will be a 4-2 to two lead for Colleen Jones. After three in the fourth end, it will be Kristen McDermott who will have the last rock playing the Blue Stones. So as we talk about the upcoming Scotty's Tournament of Hearts, Coming up at center 200, one of the province, provinces that has already been determined is that of our two of our other maritime provinces, and it will be a newer team in Kelly Sharp that will be representing Newfoundland and Labrador, and our friends from the island of Prince Edward Island We'll see Suzanne Burt and her team of Marie Christensen, Megan Hughes, and Michelle McQuaid coming out of the Charlottetown Curling Club. Advancing on to the Scotties. Burt returns for the first time since 2016. <coughs> this will be her 10th Scotties Tournament of Hearts. of course the former Canadian champion and world champion at the junior level looking to make an impact in the Scotty's Tournament of Hearts this year as we see that zone there from Coulter comes to rest on the top of the button so we'll see a corner guard put up by Barker. Sets it up just as she needs to. A reminder, as we do near the halfway point in this matchup, we will have about a five-minute break after the completion of the fifth end. So coming up after the completion of the next end. So stick with us. And we will bring you the remainder of this, this match following the completion of that.
So in the 12, sitting two is Colleen Jones that will call on Barker to play the hit on at least the front yellow for sure. Sweepers working on that one. Will it get the hit? Jams on the other yellow, so it w shot stone still belongs to Colleen Jones. So second stone's here, Mary Sue Bradford. Looks like based on the position there, it will fin finish up as a guard. Got to get it over there and will do so just enough. So that will call on Carly Jones to go for the hit. Oh. Super's working on this one. Jones calling on on them to sweep hard. Will punch the yellow right out. Update of the other tiebreaker as it will be a three point in for Marianne Arsenault. It's, sorry, not three, my apologies. Two in end number three. And that will be a tie ball game at two. Fourth end, the hammer will belong to Tanya Hilliard. Arsenal, though she is the defending champion, she does have a little bit of a new look lineup this year, bringing in Kristen Clark, the former world champion, both as a skip and alongside Mary Fay. Sassone of Radford does come to rest at the edge of the 12. Opportunity for Jones to play a bit of a a pinpoint weight tap. Weaver's watch, watching and waiting for it, dusting it off. Now Barker and Bachman join in on this one, trying to hold the line enough to get the, the tap just right. We'll tap the blue over to the side of the four foot. So Colleen Jones here. So around 
around the clubhouse there. I, j I think I just saw there they are doing some a little bit of fundraising, raising money for the Sanders Schmerler Foundation. <laughs> the initiative in m memory of the former Olympic gold medalists. They always have initiatives as well at the Sc Scotty's Tournament of Hearts. Third zone's here. Kelly Bachman looking for the run. Will jam the yellow and take out for a count of three currently in favor of Team Colleen Jones. So Kelly jumping right at the opportunity to guard. Sweepers on and off from this one there, Radford dusting it off, waiting for it to curl. Will curl over to center line. Looks like opportunity there to go for the run. Will clear off the guard, roll hers over to the edge of the sheet, just on top of the sponge towels logo in the ice. Four stones here, Kim Kelly. Holding three. Radford working on trying to get back to center, similar to the, the last stone that they had there. Will guard on the center line. So they're now looking to run back the blue on on the yellow and get some granite moving. Stewart's working on this here. Jones and Barker. 
Off and on now, so it looks cl pretty close to me. Gets the hit. Six right there, so it will, will cut down from three to one. Opportunity now for Colleen Jones. Is there, what, what are they going to do here? What are they going to do? The blue stone is challenging to remove, so you're probably playing down and try to <laughs> nudge a little bit on your own and try to at least sit the two. So, Kim going to come on back down to have a discussion about this shot. The game's going fairly fast, so no real concern of j just taking the time to take a look at this. Radford coming down to join in the discussion. The three of them very experienced having won a world senior title in 2017 at the event in Lethbridge. <laughs> Won their Canadian title on home ice in Digby back in 2016 at the Digby Arena. Sweepers working on this one. Coulter and, and Radford Looking to guard off that path. So obviously anticipating the count from Bachman and I believe yeah that it that is a shot that, that I could see. You play you play with enough enough weight, get it thin enough, you do get the double and you could sit a count of three for sure. It's one of those aggressive calls in a, in a game like this could get you back in this matchup. The big key with this shot is getting the back Yellowstone moving. So expect some weight here for sure. Final stone with the last rock. Chris and McDermott facing a count of one, but looking for a big count of three. Sweepers right off on it, waiting for it to go. Will it go? Gets the hit, sticks right there for a count of three. Big bang, boom, you got yourself a, a count to take the lead in this matchup. It is a score of five to four. What a great shot there from Kristen McDermott to take the lead in this great game against Colleen Jones. We hope you're enjoying this matchup. I know I certainly am. And I think the fans beside me certainly are too. <laughs> So 
So as the teams are just about ready to start this fifth end, we'll let you know there that Tanya Hilliard scored a deuce in at number four to take a four to two lead on Marianne Arsenault. Yeah. Arsenault will have the last rocking in number five. So now you're up to date. We will try to keep you up to date as we go down to the wire here. The winners of these matches will face off in the semifinals coming up live here at 2 o'clock. I will have the call for you. As these teams here are three wins away from a Scotty's title. So as we get started there, guard set up by Barker, Coulter, playing the come around as we've seen so many times throughout this event. Comes to rest back eight. Great to see a few of the players from other teams that were com competing in this event coming on down to watch some of the action. I think I saw a few members of Team Brent McDougall here in, in the crowd watching the action. So Sweeper's working on this one. Kelly and Radford. Kelly working really hard on this one, trying to get just that little bit more. Will come to the base to sit shot stone. Opportunity here for Carly Jones to try to sit her too. But playing the setup shot here. Fifth end announcement, if you could just refrain from using washrooms at this end of the clubhouse so that the girls can get on and off as only have a five minute break. There's a men's washroom down here on the left just past Steve's office and there's washrooms upstairs. Thanks very much. It does come to rest at the top of the four. Sits second shot. Bradford here looking for the peel. Punches it back. Will jam so it, it will be accounted to in favor of Chris McDermott right now. Tough result there for Bradford on a little bit of a peel gone wrong.
So as I mentioned, they're at the completion of this end. There will be about a five minute break as the ice crew does some maintenance. And we will be back for the second half. Stay tuned following the completion of that. And with that, we uh, I will give my customary thank you there to Tracy Froud and his crew. One of one of my former junior teammates, Matt Rushton, and a whole bunch of volunteers from the Dartmouth Curling Club who have been putting in lots of hours to ensure the conditions are excellent for the athletes. Kelly working on this one now. Coulter joins her. Looking for the hit. Will jam it. So it looks like it will be still a count of two. Opportunity there with, with the position that it's open. It looks like Kristen looking at the opportunity for a come down to the stone on the back of the 12. Try to sit a multiple and really force the pressure back on to Colleen Jones and her team. Tied up and you'd get the hammer in and number six. Weaver's waiting on come down. Will come down just enough to sit on top of the yellow, holding her too. Weaver's working on this one from the skip. Colleen Jones looking for the hit. And to potentially move some of the other blue. Will nudge over. Her shooter goes into the 12 foot, so shot still remains that of Chris McDermott at the side of the eighth. Second stone here from Bachman. Jones working on this one, trying to get it every inch. Will come to rest. Top four and just a little bit biting the button. Jones here with her second of two. W working on that one, punches back the blue. 
six for Shot Stone. So, looks like Chris and the lining up the possibility there. There is a thin double available. Big shot for sure for McDermott. Would really put the pressure back on the Colleen Jones. Barker and Jones here. Working hard on this one, trying to do. Hold the line for their skip. We'll get the hit. Stays right there. Holding shot stone. And now we'll see once once again Kim Kelly. <laughs> First of two and in, in this fifth end of play. So gets the hit six right there. Shot stone remains. Based on what I can see, it belongs to that of the back yellow. So it looks like based on, on what I can see there, if they do come down and get to the face of this one, it would be most likely at least a count of, holding a count of two, potentially three, which would really put the force on against, against Colleen Jones. Going into her fourth stone thrower, Kim Kelly's final rock of the end. Sweeper's working on this one early, really trying to hold the line there. Jones and Barker gets the hit, stays right there, and will sit for a bit. A big count so far. Big final stone needed from Kim Kelly. <laughs> so 
So she heads on down to the hack for this. The final stone of the first half. Looking for a nice bite of the forefoot to score her single to tie this game up at five. Final stone in this fifth end. Kim Kelly. Colts are just dusting it. Wait, it looks good from here based on what we've seen. Will sit right down to score her single. This game is deadlocked at five apiece. Going into the fifth end break, we'll see you back in about five minutes. You're watching the 2019 Nova Scotia Scotty's Tournament of Hearts presented here live from the Dartmouth Curling Club.
And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to continuing coverage of the 2019 Nova Scotia Scotties Tournament of Hearts. Presented here live from the Dartmouth Curling Club, I'm John Seitman here with you. Bringing you the, all the action here from Sheet C as it's tiebreaker Saturday morning for four teams as we narrow it down to our final three as we did mention. The seven draws was not enough to narrow it down as these four teams all finished with four and three records. The only sure thing right now in the women's side going into this second half of the matchup is that the winners of the game between the winners of this, these two games will face off against Jill Brothers at 9 a.m. tomorrow in the championship final. So it'll be a big match coming up at 2 p.m. here on Sheet C, and we look forward to bringing that to you. Here on Sheet C, we have the matchup between Kristen McDermott and Colleen Jones. It was a big count of three in the first for Jones, followed by Deuce in the second for McDermott, sing single in the third for Jones, and it was a big count of three in the fourth for McDermott and a single in that last end going into the fifth end break for Jones which puts us deadlocked at five apiece in the sixth end Kristen McDermott will have the last rock playing the Blue Stones update as well as we now have the score off of our other tiebreaker between Marianne Arsenault and Tanya Hilliard it will be a count of two for Marianne Arsenault to keep their game deadlocked. They are at a score of four to four. It's pretty much over there been a game of anything you can do, I can do better, so to speak, as it it was a, a blank end in the first, then it, it was Hilliard takes two, Arsenal takes two, Hilliard takes two, and Arsenal takes two, and that's where we find ourselves in that matchup. We will keep you up to date. We do have live streaming from that game taking place, so if you wanted to see any of that, you can tune over to Sheet D. But we will remind you here of who will be who are playing in this game as we have Team Kristen McDermott curling out out of Lake Short. Their lead is Shelly Barker. Their second is Carly Jones. Their third is Kelly Bachman. And their skip is Kristen McDermott. And they're They've been supported this week there as well by alternate Mark Cutcliffe and team Colleen Jones curling out of the Mayflower. Their lead is Julia Coulter. Their second is Mary Sue Radford. Their skip throwing the third stones is Colleen Jones and their fourth stone thrower is Kim Kelly. Reminder that we do play 10 ends of play in this, so five ends remaining in this matchup. If we were tied at the completion of that, we would play an extra end. And with how tight the games have been, I would not be surprised to see the possibility at extra ends in either of these two games. We're announcing the 50-50 winner. 
So on the second stones here, Carly Jones. Sweepers working on this here. Bachman and Barker. The winning amount is $55. Thank you on behalf of the juniors program. Gets the hip, punches it back. Will say shot stone. Jones working with this one now on the third. Stones is gets the hit. Six right there. I expect at some point you will have to see a play made on that top yellow biting. As Team McDermott try to manufacture a good count in this end. They don't want to give the opportunity for Colleen Jones to try to score multiple. So looking here for a bit of a roll. Will come to the nose and stick right there. Right to see a big crowd here watching the action at the Dartmouth Curling Club here on a tiebreaker Saturday morning. If you're in the area, come on down and watch the action. Admission is only $5 a draw. So now that stone just thrown by Team Jones does appear to be out. So that is an opportunity there for Team Kristen McDermott to call on Kelly Bachman to play the hit and roll. Sweeper's just dusting this one there, looking for a bit, bit of a roll. Where will it go? It will spill out a little bit. About to be shot stone at the edge of the 12. So Kelly and Jones just deciding what to call for the first stone from Kim Kelly. Four stones here. Kim Kelly facing a count of one in this end. Sweeper's really working on this one. They're going to need to go. Will tap the yellow just enough to be shot stone. But maybe that was the opportunity that Kristen was hoping for to try to be able to manufacture a good multiple.
So a reminder that we will have the playoff rounds starting at 2 p.m. this afternoon as we'll have the winners of these two tiebreakers facing off in that semifinal match. The winner will face Jill Brothers in Sunday's final. Sweeper's dusting this one there. Jo Jones just waiting for it. Will get a bit of a roll to, towards center line. Sits her too. So opportunity now set up now that with that little bit of separation there will be an opportunity for sure to sit for at least a deuce. Sweeper's working on this one here early. Coulter trying to hold the line. Will it be enough or will it go through the hole? Jess gets enough. So based on, on that, looks like we're probably headed toward a blank end in this six. <coughs> Kim having a little bit of a laugh with, with her long time skipper Colleen Jones. Perhaps that may have been, I jokingly always say there's a plan A, plan B, a plan C. That may have been about plan Z result to get a blank end. But again, sometimes the most unconventional results are what get, get you the things that you need as it will be a blank end in the six. McDermott will retain the last rock in end number seven playing. The Blue Stones. Update of our other feature game, the, so to speak, the qualifying tiebreaker as well, as it will be a steal of one for Marion Arsenault in end number six to take a 5 4 lead over Tanya Hilliard. It'll be Team Hilliard that will have the last rock in end number seven playing. The Blue Stones, now you're up to date. Reminder that you can check in on all the results live on nscurl.com. As we get started with, with, with this mat, matches, seven and Coulter opens up here with, with this one going to the top eight, it appears, top eight, top four. Barker immediately being called for the aggressive shot of the corner guard set up with with the five rock rule that type of guard to manufacture a lot of offense has become a major part of the game even more than it was with the four rock rule in my personal view.
Sweeper's working working a little bit on this, just dusting it off. Pretty good game so far here between McDermott and Jones. Both of these two teams with with some great results throughout this tournament. And it really showed the the parity of the field. When it was right down to the wire, it was and as as I said potential that there could have been up to six teams in this tie-breaking scenario. Sweeper's working on this one here. Got it by the guard. And we'll get it to the nose of that yellow stone. Pushing it toward the back of the button. So Radford here with her first of two of this end. And as we get started with this end, we'll also give a little bit of a shout out to Team Caitlin Jones, who today will be facing off in the Nova Scotia Colors for the semifinals of the New Holland Canadian Junior Championship taking place in... Saskatchewan in Prince Albert as they will face off against the winner of the tiebreaker last n night and that was Sarah Daniels of British Columbia so big game for our representatives there the defending Canadian and world junior champions Carly Bird just looking to get her third national title, which would be, as far as I can tell, probably a, one of the most of any junior women's curler. The sweepers work on this one. Will push back and Punches a guard in there. Good results. <coughs> Again, sometimes the most unconventional results are what get you the, what you need, and that one was the result you needed. On to the stone from Radford. Kelly working on, on this one a lot here. Don't want to lose it here. We'll jam off the front. So looking at the opportunity to set up multiple, you're going to see this zone here from Carly Jones looking to come around to that cornerstone at the edge of the eighth. Sweeper's working on this one, trying to come down just right. Will come up a little bit high. 
so opportunity is there for Colleen Jones if she so chooses. If it, were, if it were me, I'm definitely looking at the possibility of the, the hit and stick and try to just punch the blue through the gap would be there, but that could set up the possibilities of some doubles. Sweeper's working on this one here. Radford and Coulter. On the stone from their skip. Colleen Jones trying to come down to that shot zone of McDermott's will do so. Big stone here from Kelly Bachman. Trying to remove the yellow of Colleen Jones and keep hers as the shot stone. Will open it up a little bit. Opportunity opens up there for them. So timeout called by Team Jones. So they'll have a discussion about this one. It's difficult because they want to try to remove probably most likely that blue stone sitting as the second shot, but based on the angle that I would see it, you would have to hit it. There is a lot of risk of jams. So it looks like if they are hit, hitting it that way, they are hitting, would be going with a bit of a down weight. Big moment in this match here, Colleen Jones. The six time national champion. Draws to the blue. Taps it up a little bit and it appears to be still second shot. Shot still remains that 
yellow. So our, now you'll see Kelly Bachman called on to remove the yellow. She will roll over just that little bit. Sweeper's working on on this one here. Gets it. Rolls over to the side. Will sit. Shot stone still. So there is, hmm. It'll be interesting to see coming out of the hack because there is the possibility to try to remove those two blue if you play it just right. But appears to just be pl playing a bit of the raise on the, the stone. No. Okay. So. Hi, it's me again. Um, if you're coming back this afternoon to the semifinal game, which is at two o'clock, which I hope you all are. Um, if you please, please don't park in the parking lot that's over here by the market. That the market is opened, and we've already been spoken to by their the owners. So if you could just park down the road, uh, this way. There's another open. There's a big open parking spot. It's gravel. If you wouldn't mind parking down there for this afternoon, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. And there are a few possibilities here that could set up a multiple point end for. Chris McDermott. So looking to draw down to the yellow. Holding second shot. Really put the pressure on. That could set up a good opportunity at a multiple. Sweeper's working on this one here. Jones and Barker. We can come down to it. Where have you got? We'll get the hit. Six right there. I guess contact and will sit one, two. Big opportunity here in this match for Chris and McDermott. So big final stone here for Kim Kelly. Sweepers work working on this one here. Gets a hit. Sticks right there. Big question is which stone is the shot, and 
If so, is there a possibility of getting more than two, or is she just going the deuce? I do think there that if you play with a, a precise weight, you could open up the opportunity at a count of three. So having a team discussion on this shot, very important this late in the match to make this shot as it would be for a multiple point. Looks like they've just decided to draw. As I've, I mentioned about in the other game, what the pretty much repeating what the team has done it has happened again as it is a single point end in seven by Hilliard to tie up the game there at five. They're just playing the eighth end as we speak. Weaver's just waiting on this one here. Dusting it off, they do have a little. And it looks like it will just be the one. <laughs> They're a tough result, but again. That was, a, that's the whole, you could see that, couldn't you? It was something that you, that you could see from the start as a possibility. Still not that bad there as you're still up by one with three ends to play. And when you think of it, there you, you could have the opportunity that you blank this end, you force Colleen to take a one in the ninth, and you could have the last rock tied up in ten. Which would really put their own their fate into their hands. As we see that guard set up from Barker. So Coles are playing down here, Set, sets up this stone coming into the 12 foot. This is about halfway into the eight now. Appears to be coming up on it as we expected a very clean end. <laughs> Both teams not really wanting to do during the eighth as they know how important that hammer in the final end will be.
so clean hose here. Jason and Carly Jones looking to draw around her own guard. And will come to rest right on the lid. So as we return on this one here, Coulter. Sweeper's working on that one there to finish it off. We'll sit right there, sitting one, two. Pressure on for the force. So as we do playoffs, we will remind you there that 2 p.m. semifinal for the women's will be the winners of these two games out on the ice this morning. Jill Brothers awaits in the final. And Jill Brothers, what a season she's had, including topping the Dave Jones Mayflower Cash Spiel. I had the honor of calling that game. There is, she picked up a victory over Veronica Smith, the young junior team out of Prince Edward Island. Trying to get the curl there is Coulter, but it will not. It will roll out. And leaves just the single at the back of the 12, blowing to Team McDermott on to Kelly Bachman. Sweeper's working on this one there, trying to drag it behind the guard. <coughs> I may be wrong, but I think I saw there a single point for Marianne Arsenault, so that will be a 6-5 to five lead for her over... Tanya Hilliard through eight. The last rock in end number nine will belong to 
Tanya Hilliard. So, Colleen Jones just coming back down to take a look. Crucial moment in this game as they sit down two in the house and down one on the scoreboard. There is a possibility lined up there that they could be able to get all three of these moving. <laughs> Big stone here from the former national champion Okay, he, she'll just peel out that, that, those two stones. The two, two McDermott remain in the house. Skip Stones here. Kristen McDermott. Looking to split the house. Correction, uh, sorry. Looking to draw another. I believe. Actually, my apologies. Looks like she was a Does so. Would have probably liked a little bit more curl. Four stone thrower, Kim Kelly. We need to play around. Sweeper's not touching that, and Bachman, without much effort, does. Just draw right, right through to the back. And out. So big miss that could really give an opportunity for Chris and McDermott to play in another and really put the pressure on. Sweeper's working on this one now.
looking for as far as they can get it here. Try to get onto that blue. They get close, but it'll be draw to the four foot four. Kim Kelly against three. I like the metaphor that I think I heard people using in the stands. I've heard it used in the past. That's it. And, and I, I hope that people don't mind if I use that there. The goal is a Goldilocks shot. Not too much. Not too little. Just right is what they need. Where will it go here as Kelly sweeps it back and how many will it be? It will be a count of three. A big steal of three to make it a score of nine to five in favor of Kristen McDermott against Colleen Jones. There must have been some discrepancy with the ways as it was coming down the sheets as it goes just that little bit too much and really puts this game in a situation where McDermott can potentially put it to bed with with a good result in this end. But Colleen Jones, the former national champion, she will f fight in this game for the opportunity to stay in the running. So as we get started with, with this and there. Team McDermott and Shelly Barker draws to the top four. Coulter setting up the corner guard early. Now really wanting to manufacture the offense that they need. And actually, here's the neat thing that that is a something that people may not remember. Of course, there is that the last time the National Scotties was held in Nova Scotia it was Colleen Jones that did get to represent this province alongside her at that time her third Mary Matatal, second Kim Kelly, and lead Sue Green. And they curled out of the Halifax Curling Club at the, at the time, and they did finish with a record of six and five. Finished in six field. Of course, that was before the system that we have now in the playoffs at the Scotties and the Tim Hortons Briar, with the four teams advancing on to the, the playoffs. But it was Connie La Liberté, the former world champion and three time Canadian champion from Manitoba, that did pick up the win <laughs> and the national title in that event at the Halifax Metro Center. 
Of course, Nova Scotia has been home for many major events over the years. Most recently, the a few Grand Slam events and as well the 2015 World Men's Curling Championships. But it'll be exciting to see the Scotties Tournament of Hearts back in Nova Scotia. Wish I could make the trip up to Sydney, but I'm looking forward to seeing some of the action taking place on TV. There will be some good games throughout the week. Some, some Mary Sue being called down to center. I used to have a discussion with her skip, Colleen Jones, as they now face three and really put, being put under lots of pressure. Could be the opportunity that could lead then that they need to get a multiple here, a big multiple, or else it could be game over. Update of our other feature game, the second tiebreaker. It is Marion Arsenault that does take a single point in end number eight. And it's a blank end in the ninth as Tanya Hilliard will retain the last rock over there. Coming home down by one. So now the five rock rule is out of the way. The peels can begin. Gets the hit, rolls out. Mary Sue looking for in the hit and roll. Try to manufacture some offense to get a multi multiple. <laughs> Actually, I, mean, I thought it was the the hit there based on the the ice that Colleen was giving it. It is just drawing around the guard. Does get around around the guard and into the eight foot sitting in contention for shots for the second shot stone. But now Kelly Bachman going to play to take out the stone on the left side of your screen. Just dusting it off there. Barker gets the hit, six right there. Sitting shot stone. On to third stones as we've already had there, Bachman. Now Colleen Jones. Subert's working on this one here. Radford and Sir. Get it to top eight.
difficult to remo remove entirely. Kelly Bachman here, her her final stone in this ninth end. Sweepers working on it there, Jones. Gets the hit, removes them both and will sit a count of four. Big result there for <coughs> Team McDermott. As if I were to guess, but though you can, you can never underestimate Colleen Jones, it's going to be a tough ask to try to get a signal out of this. As she gets the hit, six right there. We'll see it for a second shot. So just looking at the angles for removing the of Colleen Jones, so it's just thrown. Big shot here. If you see them clear that, that could be a big result for sure. Sweeper's working on this one from McDermott. Just dusting it off. Looks like it's good to me. We'll re remove one of their own, but we'll sit for a count of three. Conclusion of the other semifinal as it's down to third rocks in ten. If they do conclude before we go off the air, we will let you know the result of that. If not, we will remind you that the winner of that match will face off against the winner from our match here on C in the semifinals. Coming up at and we will have that for you. Big shot here for Kim Kelly. Facing a count of three, needing a multiple point end here. We'll get to the nose. <laughs> so simply, it will be a make this one go away. And it would really put the pressure back on the Colleen Jones, or it could even be really the really the match.
as McDermott gets the hit. Six there. So, facing a count of three, Kim Kelly. When they hit on the stone at the eight foot, for accounts, it is coming fast. We'll hit, we'll roll. It'll be a steal of two, which will make it 10 to five. And it will be the, the game. It will be the team of Chris and McDermott, <laughs> Kelly Bachman, Carly Jones and Shelly Barker who will advance on to the semifinals. They will play the winner of Hilliard and Arsenal. We will have the, the call for you on that one starting at 2 p.m. So on behalf of our crew behind the scenes at 360 Live, I'm John Seitman saying have a good rest of your day and we'll see you back at 2 p.m. for McDermott versus the winner of Hilliard and Arsenal.